First of all, would you would you each mind telling me uh, uh, your name, your title, what it is that you that, that brought you here? Sure. So uh, my name is Shane Stevens. I'm Chief Development Officer and a Principal at First Element Fuel. And I'm Jolie Wanick, um, and I came here after meeting Tim and Shane. We're missing one of our partners, the the, the Three Musketeers, um, about a year ago when we started the the uh, the company as a way to fill a void that was, uh, I think desperately missing in hydrogen, which was somebody to step up and, and build the infrastructure. So how did, this, how did this meeting of the minds come about? How did you link up and decide to, to take on this project? It's kind of a funny thing. I, I, I met these guys through uh, a, a guy that worked for me way back when at Porsche, who's uh, still at Toyota, said they're looking for someone to help them. Uh, Tim and, and Shane were looking for somebody to help them kind of bring this bigger idea together. So we met about a year ago uh, when you were still at UCI, right? You're still at UCI, and we formed the company in August of last year. So, what, what was it that you were doing uh, at UCI on uh, on uh, hydrogen? Yeah, so at UCI, there's the National Fuel Cell Research Center. It's located on the on the campus, and uh, I'd been doing hydrogen infrastructure research for a long time with my colleague Tim Brown, and uh, we were just realizing that nobody was stepping up in the industry to actually go out and get stations built. So Tim and I were kind of pondering ways of how could we build a business model to go out and get that done. And it was just, you know, the, the luck of the day that we happened to meet Joel, who had moved to Newport Beach not too long before. Yeah. So the, the big accomplishment recently was getting a grant from the state of California to build out a, a lot of stations. What's the vision? What is it that you're planning to do over the next year? So one of the things that, you know, the three of us realized, and I think the car companies would acknowledge, is that uh, they have this great technology in electric fuel cells. Uh, and there were many, the many issues that needed to be overcome in terms of the product itself. But the thing that was missing is somebody to step up and build this infrastructure. And you know, General Motors, Toyota, uh, Hyundai—they all Hyundai would all tell you the same thing: that that they don't they build cars, right? They don't build infrastructure. They don't build gas stations. They don't build roads. And they're certainly not going to go out and build hydrogen fueling stations. And there was this this thing in the middle that everybody's kind of staring: who's going to do this? It's not a great business. You know, it's, it, fueling cars with gasoline is not a great business. That Anybody who runs Evans can tell you it's a penny business. Uh, the same goes for hydrogen. And somebody needed to take the, the initiative and find a way to take the state monies that are available and um, take those monies and put it together and try to collectively get the OEMs to participate. I mean, at the end, that's really what we did. We got the OEMs to step up and help us with some funding, um, primarily Toyota. I mean, we, we do owe a great deal of credit to Toyota to have the, uh, the, the wherewithal and, and to support three kind of uh, guys in a cave to, to go out and fund us to get this started. Now it's really nice. We've got others that are coming along um, to help us as well. But Toyota was the first for sure. So you're building out a network of stations. So I mean, how many stations are there going to be? What's the, what's the experience going to be like for the customer that you have in mind? Let's start. Yeah. So uh, you know what we're trying to do is really take this out of the demonstration phase of, of a network of stations uh, and build out a, a true network throughout California. So you know so far there's something like really four or five usable stations in the state of California, and each one's a little bit different. And each one's kind of a little bit of a science project. And because of that, they go down, there are little issues. So, you know, when we put in our proposal to the state, uh, we said, you know, what we're gonna do is really try to stamp this out, make each station a little bit more cookie cutter, uh, really focus on reliability, uh, you know, because these are retail customers. They're gonna expect these stations to be operating just like gasoline, right? When they go, they don't expect that, oh, I'm not gonna be able to get gasoline at the station today. Um, so uh, so we, we are currently building 19 stations and that uh, when we're done with that, that should uh, more than double the number of, of hydrogen stations in California. And I think we're going to end up having, you know, 80, 85 percent share of, of what's out there for customers to be filling their fuel cell vehicles, um, you know, in, 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 a, in a year from now. Yeah, so this isn't, to, this isn't to blame the existing stations, you know, they're experimental, they're trying to, to learn lessons and so on, but like, what's not standardized today? What, what is it that you're going to be able, to, or that you're trying to deliver to a customer that will be sort of the same at all? At I think all? in the end, what we did and what we uh, proposed to the state of California, the uh, California Energy Commission, and to the OEMs was uh, an experience for the consumer. 
And so that experience extends all the way to how you pay for your fuel, the, the handle, the locations, the fact that it's going to be 100% reliable is key. Right now we have several stations, like Shane was saying, that, that are they're wonderful experiments, um, but they, they're not as reliable as we need it to be. What we know, and what my experience tells me is, if somebody goes to a station and it's down, that's going to cause the satisfaction with the whole idea of driving an electric fuel cell to diminish. So we need to make sure our reliability is 100%, 24-7, and we have to communicate to the, the initial people buying these cars constantly. How is the station up? Is it running? Where do you go? If it's not running, how do we, how do we get them to another station? Um, we need to give them details that we don't normally uh, expect from gasoline. So we need to make sure that that experience in, to, in, in the totality is one that really helps with the satisfaction of driving those cars. That's our responsibility. We push the, the car experience back to the, the OEMs. We take everything else. So you're going to be able to, to roll up to one of these stations, pay with a credit card, just like with gasoline, exactly the same? Actually, we, we have a, you can do that, and that's part of the requirement for the monies from the state. But we're going to go beyond that. We, we have the ability that you can pay with uh, an app on your phone, maybe a lot like if you're, if you're merely Starbucks you know, very much like a Starbucks, that the actual um, pump reads you and knows you're there and actually can do it that way. So we have multiple ways of doing it. Um, How do you do that with like near field communication or something? Yeah, yeah, and it's, it already exists. The technology's there. It'll be one of the first applications in the fueling of, of cars. Um, but because we're new, we're able to take advantage of that. Sure. So that's just one of the things we're gonna do. Um, the other thing we did, and it's, it's not a small thing, the network that he talked to and he alluded to, um, there's several of our stations that are going to be uh, stations that cost us quite a bit of money to run, and the throughput through those stations is going to be low, but we thought were essential to the idea of being able to take a fuel cell electric car and drive it from San Diego all the way to Lake Tahoe and back without any kind of range anxiety, any kind of fear of having fuel. And it, so you're gonna put stations in places that are gonna be very low volume, yes. but explain that yeah, for me. What, 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 what might a customer wanna do that you're gonna be able to help? So if, if somebody wanted, so let's say you buy your brand new Toyota in, in San Diego, uh, you can actually push the button, start the car, and that day drive all the way to Lake Tahoe, go skiing, and turn around and come back that weekend. So it is really, truly uh, an alternative to an IC engine. It's not, not something that's going to happen in the future. But day one, we want that customer to have that ability. So, but that station up you know, between the Bay Area and Tahoe, it's not many people are going to use it day to day. But when people want to use it, they really yeah. need to use well, it. Well, it fulfills the promise of what an electric fuel cell car is supposed to be. And, that is, and that's why it's different than a battery electric car or any other of these alternative fuels. We're gonna offer that ability immediately. Now we need to fill out the station um, between, but we have, we have it set up so you can actually make it through. There's a place called Harris Ranch. It's halfway between Northern California and Southern California. You can hit that. And then there's a place in Truckee, California, and then you can come back home. Got it. So let's talk about the economics of this. So, so building one station, right, roughly how much does it, does it cost right now? <laughs> okay, so the, all of this is very public information. So, this, so what we're talking about, it sounds like a lot, but initially these stations are fairly expensive. Um, um, and if it wasn't for the state of California, there's no way anybody would be doing this. Um, so we really do owe to, uh, a lot of gratitude to the visionaries that exist in CARB and the state of um, California Energy Commission for providing these funds. Um, so a station costs approximately $1.4 million. There's another three or $400,000 in construction and other costs to go on top of it. So call it $2 million each. So- and I mean, how many, how many uh, you were talking a few thousand cars on the road at first. I mean, how, how many users are you gonna be able to get in a week or a month? So initially, you know, we have what we call this uh, valley of death, this, this hockey stick. So we have to build the network in order for the OEMs to be able to sell the cars. So we have a period of three years where um, it's very uh, difficult for us to, uh, to make our budget. So the way we cover that is 
Um, the state of California is providing matching funds, operational funds, to help us each and every year to pay our bills it, while the, the UIO, units in operation, grow to a point where that takes over and fulfills that same thing. I mean, so I mean, you said earlier that you know, the economics of this just aren't, aren't very good, and I mean, there's a reason why the, you know, the established players who work with hydrogen, the shells, and air products of the world aren't jumping into this with right. two feet. So why are you guys doing it? What's in it for you guys to, uh, to get started with this project? <laughs> I think, you know, I, when I met these guys, um, I have a lot of love for the idea of an uh, electric fuel cell. The electrification of the automobile, personally, is something that I have, I've been striving for. These guys spent the better part of eight to ten years working on this, so it was, it was kind of a match made in heaven. Um, but I know from discussions, arguments, you might say, that I've had with executives from General Motors, that this was the thing that was holding it up. You know, General Motors spent a lot of money on this. Toyota spent a lot on this. I know Hyundai has. Everybody's collectively spent the money to get the cars ready. The thing that was missing was this. And a lot of the gas providers or the equipment providers said, as soon as the cars are on the road, gee whiz, I will build the stations for you. Well, the car companies go, well, we can't put the cars on the road until you build the stations. So there was this catch-22 that was going on, this chicken and egg argument that was going on. And we said, you know, if someone doesn't step in and do this, this is ridiculous, if someone doesn't step in and do it. So we did. Our payout is 10 years, 12 years out. You know, that's when you really start to see this business model start to make money. For the first five or six years, it's really a labor of love. It's really because we think it's important and someone needed to do it. Yeah, but I mean, long run, I mean, can you see, uh, can you see this company that you're putting together being a sort of a long-term player in, in hydrogen fueling infrastructure, or is this sort of a transitional thing and then, and then you know, the, the big boys come and, and, and take the industry from you? You know, I, I think from, from my perspective, is it, we'd be happy to see it happen either way, right? You know, I think if we uh, get this thing off the ground and we enable fuel cell vehicles, um, and then the big players come in and run us over or buy us out, you know, so be it. At least we did the work that we were here to do, which is to get this industry, you know, started. Um, and uh, uh, I think that, you know, on the other hand, if, if we can grow and, and become, you know, a leader in, in you know, the, the hydrogen future, uh, that would be very positive as well. So we have really, and, and, and I tell these guys, look, we have one focus at this point. Um, so when that question comes up, it really doesn't matter. None of that, those questions matter. What are we gonna be? We have to build 19 stations. We've been given the funds to build 19 stations. We have really, that is our number one focus, the number one thing we need to look at every single day. The other stuff will just happen. And whether it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But none of it happens if we don't build the 19 stations. Okay. So every day we get up thinking, okay, what are we doing for those 19? And I got to tell you, there's a lot of work and building these stations. It's gonna, you're all gonna look, oh, that looks nice, the station's up and running. <laughs> the amount of effort it goes, the zoning, the permitting, the conversations, the fire marshals, everything that goes behind the scenes to do this is very difficult. It's no, it's Give, give me an done. example, give me an example. Uh, everybody is looking, every time we go into a new town to build one of these stations, they're doing it for the first time. And so they're looking at us and saying, well, what are the fire regulations? What are, what are the zoning permits? What is the setback from the lines? Yeah, they're asking really basic questions that I bet you 10 years from now are going to be basic. Like what happens with a gasoline station is very basic now. But somebody had to start it. And so we're the first to go ask all these questions. And so we're dealing with a lot of things that nobody really has the answers to. And we're providing those answers. It's, you know, somebody's got to do it. So we're dealing with fire marshals that are helping us write the, the, you know, the code book for how to do this in each little town uh, throughout California. Mm -hmm. So, and the, you know, the, the, the big uh, benefactor so far, aside from the state of California, has been Toyota, is the idea that sort of more, more car companies, more fuel uh, providers and so on uh, could come and, and support you? Are you looking for more supporters? Yeah, this is a very important uh, topic because Toyota has been very outspoken in the fact that they're supporting First Element and they really want other OEMs to participate. They've really been trying to encourage other OEMs from Hyundai, Honda, Mercedes-Benz, those are the initial ones we're talking to, but they wanted to go beyond that because they believe that if we could create this initial network, that it will help them create a market behind fuel cell electric vehicles starting here in California that can easily be exported to the Northeast or to China or to other parts of the world. Um, but we have to prove it here and we have to be successful here.
So yeah. first. And just like one more question on this. I mean, what have, what have you learned from the rollout of battery electric vehicles, of plug-in hybrids? I mean, as, as someone who you know, uh, drives the vehicles and, and sort of gets a feel for the infrastructure, there's still you know, a lot of different networks out there and there's, and there's different plugs and some confusion for a customer. Do you think it's possible to have a seamless experience across California where if you own one of these vehicles, you can go anywhere and without signing up for five different memberships and you get it, you know, just fuel, fuel up wherever? Yeah, so I, you know, I, I think the, the, the battery vehicle thing is, is very different by nature, right? I mean, just the, the type of driving and customer uh, uh, needs that a fuel cell vehicle needs, it's more comparable to that of a gasoline ICE engine than a, than a battery electric vehicle. So I think you have a little bit of difference there. Um, I think the other thing is that a lot of great people uh, have done a lot of work, you know, really over the last 10 or 15 years to get at a point where we do have some great hydrogen standards. So there's, you know, fill protocols that are uh, uniform across the board, the type of uh, dispenser nozzles people are using are uniform now. Um, you know, and I think uh, now what we're working to do is really make the retailing, uh, final retailing part of it uh, more uniform. And, and I think uh, I'm confident that, you know, it is gonna be uniform across the state. I mean, that was part of our, our proposal to the OEMs and to the state of California that there's something called, and, and you probably should know this, although you learn it and then forget it, but there's something called J2601-14. It's a protocol that all the car companies are following to kind of standardize the fill from, from the station to the car, in the car, to make sure it gets a full fill inside the car and all that. That's all been standardized. A lot of people put a work into that and all the car companies cooperated to come up with this standard. Um, and going forward, we're really looking at the first stations that actually are fulfilling that J2601-14 standard. As long as we follow those standards, it's going to be a seamless process for a consumer. They won't know what's going on, but a lot of work has happened behind the scenes. And every car company has participated in that and, and been party to that. Great. Well, that's all the questions I have for you guys. Thank you so much. I think the one thing we want to say, uh, let's add one thing. So one of our goals is to be very inclusive. Um, so we have others that are building stations throughout the state of California. So to get to your, your point earlier is how do we ensure the network works together? Yeah. We're going to go out of our way to work with other networks. We, we don't want to be a, a, a predator or a competitor with them. We actually want to be inclusive and work with them. So you, the idea is we've set this network up. And the state of California has done a very good job of making sure that their stations that they pick to fund is, is spread out. So we have good stations, whatever few stations there are between ours, we want to make sure we're all working together because at the end of the day, we are for the successful launch of electric fuel cells. That's really our goal. That's the mission that we stated to the OEMs, to the state of California, and we're going to keep to that mission. Build the 19, be inclusive, make sure everybody feels like they can be part of a team coming together. Uh, initially, we are not looking at being, you know, this big competitor trying to eat up others. It's going to be a number of years before we really start to see competition start to happen, five, six, seven years. Um, and at that point, you know, we'll see where we are and we'll see where everybody is. But initially, for the first five to six, seven years, this is really everybody working together as a team. You, you need that rising tide to lift all boats. Exactly. The experience isn't good. And you need right. the no experience of driving these cars to be a positive one, not a negative one. We, we can be part of that positive experience. If we start fighting with the other station owners, it doesn't make any sense. We all lose. Yeah. I mean, really the way to build this thing, right, is to enable the rollout of the cars and have the focus be the car, not, oh, are, is there the infrastructure? Is there problems with the infrastructure?